Somewhere down the line, learning became not fun. I think somehow kids started coming to school and saying, I'm not going to have fun today, I'm going to school. And the reward of Historia is fun. Historia is game-based learning. It is a way to take a traditional subject, like social studies, but to teach it through experience and interactivity. Historia is viewing history and learning it through gameplay, and you get to experience it as your own country. All right, here we go. 28. Oh my God! Sixth graders, when they come into school, it's their first time in a big building. There's kids coming from all different schools, so they're not from the same elementary school. So a sixth grade mind is very social. They're gonna uh, talk to each other at their table and not necessarily be listening. So when Historia comes around, it's definitely challenging the first few weeks while you're setting it up because they are confused. They don't know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. But then once it gets started, all those things kind of go to the side. I still hear them talking to their friends, but the conversation switches from the latest movie into, well, what points did you get? How did you do? The best part of Historia, I think, is uh, being able to create your own history because not only do you learn about other countries during that time period, you get to learn about uh, what has happened and what can happen to you. Have you ever heard of eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth? That comes from Hammurabi's code. If I have a teacher standing in front of me talking, it's very hard for me to remember because I get bored, distracted. But in Historia, it's no place to get distracted. You're working the whole time and making decisions as a group. So, so what are you finding is the most important pillar that allows you to kind of build the other one? Maybe education. 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 It's important that students feel success, because if they don't feel successful, they'll, they'll give up. And at the beginning, when we first made the game, it was too hard. And the students would, you would have a group that was doing so poorly that by the second half of the year, you'd see them a little detached because they say, what's the point? You know, I've, I've done the best I can and now we're still not successful. I don't have time for this, you know? So Rick and I tried to build in ways students could be successful each week or every other week to where it's gonna get them to keep on coming back to it. You do learn a lot because uh, you have to research everything and you have to learn what to do and how to make right decisions. And you learn how to be a government and learn how to interact with other people. Who's the monarch here? Carson, okay, so what's the bet gonna be? Seven. Oh, eight, eight, eight. Yeah. It's eight. Yeah. It's eight. Okay, you all think that's a good bet? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jared likes ten. 10. You want 10? But then, but then we remembered Slaver Bolt, so I'm like, let's do eight. Okay, okay, we'll see how it turns. Good. Go if I look at my job as everything you need to know is in my brain and I am your source of information, I feel like I'm sending the wrong message, which is somebody else knows the answer. With Historia, the teacher is just there to facilitate. You're there to guide the learning instead of being the center for learning. Uh, you're there to help kids learn how to research better. You're there to help kids compromise. You're there to help kids learn to make better decisions. And that's how learning should be. In my experience, 13 years of teaching, this is best teaching practice. When I didn't teach this way, I would still have 10% of my class who I would struggle to get to pay attention. Even though I did projects and games and, and mixed it up and debate and all that, I tried to make the class the best I could make it. Even when I did that and worked very hard at it, took it seriously, 10% of my class maybe wouldn't pay attention. I don't have that problem now. When I started teaching, my mantra was, I am not scared to fail. Failing is how you learn. Mist making mistakes is how you get more knowledgeable and, and become better. And so I would try anything in my classroom to make a connection with my students, to make my class more engaging.